तव कथात तप्त जीवन कविरीड़ कलमशापहम श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंति ते भूरीदा जना टुडे इज द सेक्रेट डे ऑफ स्वामी त्रिगुणा तीतानंद जी बर्थ स्वामी त्रिगुणा तीतानंद वॉज वन ऑफ द सिक्सटीन मोनेस्टिक डिसाइपल्स ऑफ श्री राम कृष्ण ही वॉज बॉर्न ऑन थर्टी एथ जानेवरी एटीन सिक्सटी फाइव ऑन ए मंडे एट नाइन ट्वेंटी सिक्स पी एम ही वॉज बॉर्न एट ए विलेज कॉल्ड नवरा वेर वी हैव ए सेंटर नव वी हैव एक्वायर्ड हिज बर्थ प्लेस एंड राम कृष्ण मट एंड मिशन इज हैविंग ए सेंटर देर इट इज इन ट्वेंटी फोर परगना डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ वेस्ट बेंगाल हिज फादर वॉज शिव कृष्ण मित्र मित्र इज द टाइटल एंड शारदा प्रसन्न वॉज इज नेम शारदा इज अनदर नेम फॉर मदर दुर्गा शरत See the Sharath is the winter, so during the winter, the mother's puja is done. So it's called Sharada puja, Sharadi Durga puja. So Sharada is another name for Durga. So after much prayer to Durga, this son was born. He was one of the four male children of his parents. So Sharada Prasanna was his name. so from his very young age the boy had a very prodigious memory his father was a very devout man father used to spend lot of time in reading scriptures devotional literature and in puja so this boy inherited all those qualities from the father and he had a prodigious memory even before he was 10 or 12 years old he had committed to memory 108 hymns of sanskrit 108 stotras from sanskrit then he was admitted into a school called metropolitan institution which was started by vidyasagar and in which master mahashay mahendranath gupta was the headmaster so this boy being a very precocious and intelligent boy was very dear to him once during his entrance examination during his lunch time he had kept his gold pocket watch on the table so when he came back from his lunch he found his gold watch had been stolen away by some staff member or maybe some other student so that upset the boy that he lost a valuable gold pocket watch perhaps given by some dear relative maybe his father so this upsetting of the mind affected all his other examinations so a brilliant boy though he was he could not fare very well though he passed but he could not fare in distinction so he was little bit depressed day after day the boy looked depressed and yam could notice that as a good headmaster yam had an eye on all the good students so then he thought something should be done for this boy therefore he one day took him to sri ram krishna the curer of all diseases so he said this depression also will be cured of this boy so he took him to sri ram krishna so what happened between sri ram krishna and the boy on the first day we don't have any record but anyway he must have asked him to come back again so the boy met sri ram krishna second time so when he went for the second time sri ram krishna sent him to holy mother sharda devi who was in nahabat asking him to be initiated by her and he encouraged this uh, you know, this shiva krishna mitra triguna titananda Sharda Prasanna, he was called Prasanna by others, and Sri Ramakrishna used to call him Peshon 
Prasanna became patient. So in his colloquial tongue, so he used to call him patient. A patient, you go and get initiated by mother, who is in Nahavad. And as, en- yet, as a way of encouraging him, he told him in Bengali, Ananto Radhar Maya Kohane Na Jai Koti Krishna Koti Ram Hoy Jai Roy. So he said, Radha's power is indescribable. And the crores of Krishna's come and go according to her grace. So after hearing this great praise of Mother's power, and he went, perhaps at that time Holy Mother did not initiate him. Later on he did, she did initiate him. Because Holy Mother used to say, my first disciple was Yogin, that means Swami Yogananda whom she initiated in Vrindavan. After Sri Ramakrishna's Mahasamadhi, when Holy Mother was in Vrindavan, Sri Ramakrishna appeared to her in a dream and then said, you initiate Yogin, Yogendranath Vishwas, that was his full name. Then later, later on he became Yogananda. So you, inst- you initiate Yogin, I have not given him any mantra. So Holy Mother initiated Yogin. So she used to say, Yogen is my first first disciple. But because Sri Ramakrishna had asked him him to go, it cannot become untrue. Therefore, later on, Holy Mother called him. Though he had been initiated by Sri Ramakrishna, she gave this uh, Sharda Prasanna also a mantra. So these were the only two direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna to get initiated by Holy Mother. Then, natural, he was, he, as, as we have already seen, his father, Shiva Krishna Mutra, was a very rich man. So, being a rich man, there were a lot of servants to do all the jobs. The Sharda was not used to do any menial work, even serving his parents. He did not do much at home. Therefore, he thought all this work, even to serve the elders, is all like a menial work, servants' work. And he, was, he would feel hesitant to do that. But that is not good for a Swami. He is going to become a sannyasin. A sannyasin is a servant of everybody. So, Sri Ramakrishna, when he came to know about his attitude, before everybody one day, he ordered him, Hey Prasanna, bring some water and wash my feet. So all his friends were there in front of him. So he felt very hesitant, but he kept looking at Sri Ramakrishna without doing it. Sri Ramakrishna again repeated, go, get water and bring and wash my feet. So Sri Ramakrishna's personality was so strong and he was after all a young boy. So he went, fetched a pitcher pitcher full of water, poured it on Sri Ramakrishna's feet and as he was washing, he felt all his superiority complexions disappeared once and for all. Then he began to feel that he was a servant of servant of all the servants of Sri Ramakrishna. So that is how Sri Ramakrishna started instructing him in humility. Then Sri Ramakrishna, after he came into contact with Sri Ramakrishna, he was very much attracted to go now and then to Sri Ramakrishna, sit for hours with him, sometimes spend his nights also, when Sri Ramakrishna, due to his illness, was shifted to Calcutta, then he started serving him in Calcutta also. Then his father did not like this at all. Then naturally, being a father, he thought the only way is we must draw his mind down from this spiritual level. So let us, let us marry him off. Then the family problems will come, then his mind will be normal. So they tried to marry him off. But every time he was told, he said, no, I am not interested in marriage. He would say no. But then they said, this fellow will not agree if we tell him, let us forcibly marry marry him. So they arranged with a party that the marriage will will be taking place, even, even if he does not agree. So they were going ahead with preparation. 
to marry him off. When he came to know about this attitude of them, he left the home, leaving a letter on the table, addressing to his parents, My dear parents, I am not at all interested in marriage, but you are very much interested in tying me up. I don't want to get tied up to this Maya. I am leaving. So where, I will not tell. He left a letter on the table and disappeared. He went to Sri Ramakrishna at Kasipur. Then, perhaps he did not reveal to Sri Ramakrishna that he was running away from home without the permission. Then he went away to towards Puri. Sri Ramakrishna might have known all these things. Then, see, he was keeping quiet. Then this uh, young man has disappeared from home. When the ba- parents saw the letter, they were very much uh, embarrassed. What is to be done now? So they inquired here, there. No, none of the relatives knew what had happened to him. Then they came to, naturally, Kasipur garden, where Sri Ramakrishna was there. Then he said, yes, he came here. And then he said, he is going to Puri. Oh, I, has he told he will go to Puri? Then both the husband and wife, father and mother, they rushed to Puri. In the meanwhile, this young man has been travelling on foot. Puri is almost more than a thousand kilometers. So he was walking along. He came to a jungle. So it was almost evening. He wanted to cross the jungle and go to the next village and take rest. But it was a very big jungle. He was caught in the midst when it became absolutely dark. Then it was a jungle full of violent animals. How to save himself? He climbed up on a tree and started taking rest and even take a little sleep on the branch of a tree. Then suddenly he heard a voice almost at the dead of night. O oh, Sanyasi, aren't you hungry? Take these sweets and also take this water. He heard a voice. When he looked down, somebody he saw was keeping some sweets and water and disappearing. So he thought, Oh, it is the grace of Guru Maharaj that somebody has, is giving him help. He came down from the tree, took the sweets and water, then rested for the night on the tree. When he came down in the morning, he found there was absolutely no dwelling of any house, any village, anywhere. He had to go through several kilometers out of the jungle to find the village there. So he all thought it is all Guru Maharaj's grace that saved him in the night and freed him from his hunger also. Then when he reached Puri, by that time his parents were waiting there. So they could spot him out. Then they entreated him, No, no, you please come. You don't go, why did you run away? They were very kind to him. So they took him back. So he returned to Calcutta. Then it, there was only one month remaining for his FA examination. So for, though it was only one month, he could prepare himself and passed with distinction. Then again he started going to Sri Ramakrishna. Any amount of dissuasion by his parents or his elder brother could not prevail upon him. So he went on visiting Sri Ramakrishna. They wanted to somehow stop him. So his elder brother, he caught hold of a big uh, tantric scholar. So he asked him to perform a big yajna, spending in those times 4,000 rupees. 4,000 is equal to perhaps Oh, four crores now, spending so much money on a yajna, which lasted one month and ten days. Then at the end of this one month and ten days, those yajniks, those people who perform the yajna, they said, your son is so much in a high level of spirituality and strongly decided to become a spiritual person, this yajna cannot do anything to him. So the whole thing went to waste. When uh, Trivunatitananji or Sharda Prasanna came to know that they were trying to do yajna to turn his mind away from spirituality, he completely lost interest in his relatives. He became much more de- devoted to Sri Ramakrishna. Then in 1886, Sri Ramakrishna attained Mahasamadhi. 
after the mahasamadhi we all know that the youngsters who were attached to sri ram krishna they all became a group they organized themselves into a monastery that was called the varaha nagar monastery before organizing that varaha nagar monastery they all went to the village of one of their brothers premananda so this premananda baburam so baburam's paternal house at antpur near calcutta they went and they stayed there for quite some time and it was there on one christmas eve all of them heard an inspiring talk on jesus christ and his mission to the world how he loved people served people and became a messiah himself so like that we should also serve the world and become great spiritual people so they took a decision they will all dedicated life for spirituality and service of human beings so it was at antpur they were all taking this great vow one day when they went to take bath in the big lake there even now that lake is there see this sharda prasanna he slipped and fell into the deep water he didn't know swimming he would have drowned himself to death in the meanwhile niranjanananda he jumped into the water somehow saved him that is how a catastrophe was avoided then afterward they returned to baranagar at baranagar they took sanyas and swami vivekananda himself gave the name trivuna titananda after giving his name then swami ji said your name is very, very long trivuna titananda nobody will pronounce it make it only trivuna tita so people used to call him trivuna tita and of course the dear people they used to call him sharda prasanna or prasanna and so sri ram krishna and his other, his other senior devotees they used to call him patient also so prasanna so sharda prasanna became triguna titananda one day without telling anybody he left for vrindavan but then after some distance he felt to walk all the way to vrindavan was impossible so he went and asked for the railway fare then somebody told railway fare full railway fare who will give you some hundreds of rupees in those days so somebody can give you 5 rupees or 6 rupees so you cannot get the full fare then he thought without taking full fare the railway people will not give you ticket to vrindavan 5 5 rupees you cannot purchase ticket and go then he returned after some time then the other disciples were very happy that he came back then like that he again again once started he and sharda sharda prasad sharat maharaj as well as mahapurush maharaj all of them they wanted to go to navadvip navadvip was also not very far but it was a long journey to walk so they said let us walk so he started off much early then sharat maharaj and mahapurush maharaj he early went on the way he felt it was early morning he felt hungry then what is to be done he has no money in his pocket then he found in the nearby meadow some green grass is there fresh grass he just picked up the fresh grass he ate it as grape just like cows would eat so he ate and digested the whole lot by the time the sharat maharaj and mahapurush maharaj followed they asked him where did you do have your breakfast he said why this i ate this grass here and i have i am quite free from my hunger so later on everybody recounted he had got extraordinary certain powers of eating digesting and undergoing austerities hardships he had an extraordinary way of meeting all those emergencies once he was sent by swami brahmananda to one doctor he was suffering from stomach trouble so he was sent to dr bipin ghosh he was a very friendly doctor he went so dr bipin ghosh was a devotee as soon as he saw this young swami coming 
come Swami. Then he gave him one plate full of six or eight rasagullas, hot rasagullas. So he ate away all the eight rasagullas. Then afterward, Dr. Bipin asked him, Swami, what, what brings you brings you here? Oh, I have stomach trouble, that is why I came here. Oh, Swami, for stomach trouble, this rasagullas are very bad. How did you, you eat it? You gave me, I ate that all. <laughs> you didn't ask earlier. So, why should I tell my disease first? When you asked, I am telling this. But then he got the medicine, but he became all right afterwards. So, similarly, many times, one day, Baburam's mother, so she had invited all the young devotees, young sannyasin, to her house for a special feast. Then all of them had to go. But suddenly there was some some reason where, you know, all of them felt they have their own duties in the Barnagar Mutt, they cannot go. Almost all of them, they absented. I mean, all of them absented themselves. And only Trivunati Tananda, they asked, somebody must go. So, you, you go at least. You can go and you will eat little more and she will be pleased. So, he went. Then she had prepared for all these sixteen people. He ate away all the sixteen people's food. Fully. And she got frightened. What will happen to him? Sixteen people's food I had prepared. Whole thing he has eaten away. What will happen? So he slept there and in the next morning he was perfectly altered. <laughs> he digested the whole lot. That was his power. Special powers. One day the same lady, so she said, so he wanted, she wanted to give him some thickened milk. They boil the milk and make it thick. It becomes very tasty. So, it's called Ganadud. So, she had prepared a thickened milk, seven and a half liters. She had, it must be about fifteen liters, boiled down to seven and a half liters. And she went on giving him glass after glass. He drank you with the whole seven and a half liters. And nothing happened. So, he would digest. But that was one way of overeating. But he could do without eating also. For seven days, he would not take any food at all. Just like an austerity, only one banana a day. Morning and evening, one banana he would take. Full seven days. He was perfectly all right. He would go through his spiritual practices, do the duties of him in the ashram. After seven days only, he resumed his normal food. So, he was a tremendous power of austerity and this way of digesting food going, fasting also. One day it is said, he was returning from Jairam Bhati by walk to Varnagar Mutt. It is almost more than hundred kilometers. So on his way, he found, he, he was very, very hungry. He went into a small, what you call a small hotel, where the only they serve the simple food. He went inside and then asked, what is the cost of one meals? They said, we have got two types of meals. One meal is uncontrolled, unlimited food. And another is limited food. For limited food, you have to pay one rupee. So, we will give unlimited items and so much quantity. And unlimited food, you have to pay double, maybe two rupees. If you pay two rupees, you can ask any amount and you can take anything. He said, give me unlimited food. Then he sat for eating. Then the hotel fellow went on serving, serving, serving. All the food, all the vegetables, all the dal, exhausted. And he is asking for more also. Then he came and saluted him. Sir, I, you, don't, you don't have to pay for this what you have eaten. You please go, I have nothing to serve you anymore. So without paying, he went away. So, such funny things also would happen. So he had a great love for Holy Mother. So once Holy Mother, Holy Mother, you know, she is, a very, she is also an extraordinary lady. She liked the, the hottest chili. She wanted very hot chili. She liked chilies and out of all, even the fruits also. If there's some mango was very sweet, so she would she did not like. Some sourishness she liked. So she would like sourish mangoes and hot chilies. So she told one day, to this Sharda, 
you please get some hot chili so he wanted to select the hot hottest chili went on eating one chili from every shop went 10 13 14 shops he went he has eaten 13 14 chilies so his tongue got swollen up and then he selected the hottest chili and brought for holy mother similarly when holy mother was coming to vishnupur from vishnupur to jairambati on the way it, it became night so mother was traveling in the bullock cart in the night they saw there was a big ditch on the road so the bullock cart when you come when it would cross that one it would give a really big jump to the cart so mother was sleeping inside the cart then trigona titananda said you see what is to be done this ditch is there the cart has to go over it there is no way on the other side it all fields it cannot go so if it goes in the ditch mother will be disturbed therefore there is no boulder or anything there no stone or anything and so there was no time to dig some earth and fill it up in the night he said i will lie down in this ditch like a big boulder over my body you take this cart the bullock and the cart will all go over my body so he went and lay himself down in the ditch then some or other mother she is the mother of the universe she suddenly felt something is happening she got up so from the sleep and she asked what is happening here then the cart driver he, he told her that trigona titan is lying down in the ditch there he wants me to take this cart over him then mother got very much confused what is this this fellow is taking so much of risk she said stop the vehicle go and ask him to get up then they made some arrangement so they take took it by some side and the journey was continued so that was his great devotion to mother then he went on a long pilgrimage one after another once somebody told that was even when he was in the baranagar mat he was very inquisitive very inquisitive and daring so he very inquisitive he never believed in ghosts because he went wherever people used to say there is a ghost he would go and enquire and he would find it is all only a hocus pocus it is not true at all so several times he was deceived so he never believed if anybody said there is a ghost it is all simply these fellows make fun make uh, I mean, deceive people so he never believed then at last somebody said certainly there is house there is a very terrible ghost there you if you go there you will certainly see the ghost you will not return deceived he said all right i will go and see he left baranagar mat without telling anybody so he went away they said it comes at 12 o'clock in the night so the swami entered into that house and he is sitting there inside the room waiting for the ghost to come and at the midnight the it was the haunted the haunted house he found a big light coming from the from the window side then when he looked at the window in those time the window had no railing or anything it would all simply open to open window there was a fierce eye big eye was there and in the center of the eye there was a terrific uh, fire and that fire approached and then it was it entered the window it was about to devour him so he got completely panicked so he could not do anything he was about to swoon at that time sri ramakrishna appeared caught hold of his hand and then led him out of that room telling why do you go and do all these adventures you think about me that is more than enough what you what are you going to gain by all this adventure if now you know that there is a ghost here how does it help you it does not help you in your spiritual life so don't take all this uh, daring things unnecessarily in your life so he advised him left him out of the house then he came back to baranagar and reported this is what happened so this was how and one day suddenly he was a very voracious reader greatly interested in scholasticism in scholarship he would read read and read the whole of night to vedanta books and sanskrit uh, literature and 
western philosophy who is a great reader so one day he thought i must know something about tantric sadhana so in the night i must go into the cremation ground and do tantric sadhana and swami vivekananda had advised has advised all of us of the ramkrishna mata and mission that do tantric sadhana will be done because sri ram krishna has had told him no tantric sadhana is necessary for you i have done all the tantric sadhanas for you so you don't have to do it so he had told also the brothers in baranagar monastery you need not do any tantric sadhana but suddenly the swami got into his head that he should do tantric sadhana so at then at night 10 o'clock or 10:30 when all are sleeping then he got up and started walking out from baranagar towards the cremation ground then suddenly swami brahmananda got up then he started shouted to him oi prasanna e sharada don't go don't go for tantric sadhana then he was wonderstruck how does he know i did not tell anyone at least uh, they can see me going out but i am going out of tantric sadhana how did this brahmanand swami came to know don't go for tantric sadhana come back come back then you know he came back and then he came to know as soon as he <laughs> left barnagar but then sri ram krishna appeared and brahmanand ji was sleeping also in his dream sri ram krishna appeared i see that trigunatitananda that sharda prasanna is going for tantric sadhana stop him that is a brahman some cut up wet and then shouted at him and that was the end then they told that this tantric sadhana is not required for us sri ram krishna has told and swami ji also has told us so we should not do it that was the end of his desire to do tantric sadhana so similarly one day he took it into his head that he should do japa continuously continuously means what continuously 24 hours and suppose you is doing japa then the meals time comes so he they asked him to come and take food no i don't take food why because i am doing japa how can i do japa and take meal take meals i cannot so morning meals went away evening meals went away so they said night meals so he is not taking any meals also just because his japa would be disturbed then they found out a way he said no 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 you must take food without taking food how long are you going to do japa then his condition was you see i cannot stop the japa so the only way is if mahapurush maharaj he is himself a great austere person so let him touch me and go on doing japa for me and then i will take food for 5 minutes or 10 minutes then afterwards i will resume the japa if this is agreed i can take food they all arrange for him like that mahapurush maharaj was touching him and doing japa at that ta- at that time he took food this is how he had his own peculiar way but extraordinary way of doing sadhana also so they went as as we already seen to antpur that was a christmas eve day so after that only he introduced the celebration of christmas eve in our mission after that antpur resident he was the person who continued in baranagar mat afterwards in belgaum mat also the celebration of christmas eve then swami vivekananda went on pilgrimage and all the other people were also on pilgrimage then trigunatitananda swami was also on pilgrimage so he went all over after one after another when he came to porbandar in gujarat there so many other sanyasis were also there they also they all wanted to cross the sea and go to a place called hinglaj hinglaj was considered a very sacred place even now it is there so many sindhi people they are all very much devoted to the devi there at hinglaj so they wanted to go to hinglaj but it was not possible to so easily go one could go to karachi by boat or ship then from karachi they could walk uh, after several walking several kilometers you can reach hinglaj so all the swami said you see we hear that the divan of this porbandar 
has in his place one Bengali Swami is there. So, he is very much devoted to that Bengali Swami. You are also a Bengali Swami. On our behalf you go and then find out who that Swami is and through his influence you get us some money to go by ship up to Karachi. Then from there we will go to Hinglach. Then the Swami accepted. So, the, leaving the Swamis behind, he went to Porbandar to find out from the Divan's house who that Swami was. That was Swami Vivekananda himself. Vivekananda was there, but Vivekananda was not having that name at that time. He was having in sometimes Sachidananda, sometimes Vividishananda. So, when he heard the name, he could not make out that it was there Swamiji. When he went there, it was Swami Vivekananda there. Then he told him, all the Swamis want to go to Hinglaj, so they want some help from the Divan. Then Swami said, I cannot ask for money, I never ask. Even for me, I don't ask. So why did you accept all that leadership from them and going on begging for them? Don't do such things. Anyway, he introduced him to Divan. Then he himself told the Divan. So Divan was very much pleased to help all the Swamis to go to Hinglaj. That is how he helped all the Swamis to go to Hinglaj. Then, so his adventurous spirit, he thought, I must visit Tibet. Tibet Tibet was a inaccessible place in those times. British period, they did not want Indians to go to Tibet also. Because Tibet was an independent country, it was not under the British. So if these people go there, then they may bring some weapons and other things to fight against the British. So all sorts of trouble may come. Therefore, they did not want Indians to cross the Tibet border. There were strict orders to stop everybody. So, this Swami wants to go to visit Tibet. So, he went all the way in 1895. On the way to Tibet, he was walking, walking. Then, it was a moonlit night and he wanted to cross a hill stream and go to the other side where there was a real village where he can go and take rest. So, the, it was a moonlit night, very bright. So, the hill stream, maybe it was not very wide, he found a broken bridge. Now, here and there it was broken. Then he said, I can jump a little distance so from here to another good part of the bridge, I jump. Then walk a little, then a little broken, then jump to the other part. So, I think I can easily do, cross this river. He started off. So, he jumped from one first part to the second stone with a little breach in between. Then the next breach came, the third he jumped, four. He was in the middle of the river. Another half river is there. A two or three jumps he has to take, but it became cloudy. So the whole moonlight went away. Hill stream is flowing very strong. Himalayan hills, full speed is there and the breaches are there. Unless it is visible, how will you jump from one breach to another? How do you know that the breach has come if everything is dark? Darkness in the Himalayan region means pitch dark. You cannot see anything, you cannot see your own hand. That is the darkness that comes. So it has become pitch dark. He is in the middle of the river. So how do he cannot come back, he cannot go forward. And if he stays there also, the current may increase and take you away also. So he cannot stand also. He cannot stand. He cannot go forward, he cannot come back. Most dangerous situation is there. Then he thought, the whole thing, situation is useless. He started taking the name of Sri Ramakrishna and standing there. And the pitch darkness is there. In the darkness he heard a voice, Come, follow me. And one person started walking in front of him, jumping from one, one bridge to another. So he also started following that man. When he jumped, he would also jump without seeing what is there. So, once, twice, thrice, he jumped and he reached the other shore. As soon as he reached the other shore, the clouds cleared and the moonlight came and he is on the other shore, on the strong ground. He finds all around, nothing is there, only the snow is there and no village, nothing whatsoever. And who is that man who led me across the river? He immediately knew it was Thakur himself. So, Sri Ramakrishna saved him like that. So, like that, he has wonderful experiences. 
So on the mountains, so he found there was a temple and with a compound. So he reached there, so he wanted to, it was evening in another place. So all the villagers came. He said, no sir, you don't stay in this temple. You come into our village and stay in one of our houses. I said, no, no, I don't stay in householders' houses. I am a sannyasi. Only dilapidated temple or any other spiritual place, uh, then there only I will stay. So they tried to persuade him, but he would not agree. I will stay in this. Then they told, Swami, this is a very terrific place. This compound is there and in the evening after the sunset, from somewhere big mosquitoes, mosquitoes come, very big in size, and they will bleed you out if they start biting you. Some ten mosquitoes are enough to take away all your blood from your body. They come in thousands. You will not be able to control them. They come every day. Some people try to live here. In the morning we found them dead. These mosquitoes had bleeded them completely. So if you want to take the risk, you can take the risk. We invite you to come into our village otherwise. He said, no, I will take the risk. Let me see what these mosquitoes are. So is daring spirit. So they said, all right, let him suffer his own destiny. They all went away closing the compound. The Swami is sitting in the temple with only one blanket around him, thin blanket. Then from suddenly, from somewhere, thousands and thousands of mosquitoes came, all as big as like sparrows. Each one mosquito is so big. They started biting him on the head, on the feet, on the hand. So with one blanket, how could he cover? If he covers the head and the chest, you know, the legs are left blank. They bite him and the leg. So if he covers the leg, the head is left bare. They went on biting him here, there. He started jumping, went to the corners of the room, started rolling with that blanket around him. Whole night it was a fight with these mosquitoes. In the morning he had completely tired. And then mosquitoes left in the morning. He was bleeding all over his body. Then the villagers found, not dead, completely, almost, <laughs> bleeded, bleeding completely, bloodlessness. That was his condition. Then somehow it took eight days for him to recover from this bleeding. Then when he became normal, he left the villages, went. So then, this was his experience of his Tibet. He came back to Calcutta afterwards. Then, when he started narrating this one, so many people, including the journalists, they were interested in knowing about Tibet. Tibet was a very secret place at that time. So he wrote many articles in many journals about his experiences there, and Indian Mirror and other famous journals published it. Then, you know, he was a great scholar. He started taking classes on Bhagavad Gita, on Upanishads, and he also wanted to train the young people in good morals. Calcutta was the capital of the British Empire. It was the second biggest city in the British Empire, next to London. In, in every res respect, all sorts of drunkenness, all sorts of uh, bad morals were also there, as were there in London. At that time, the British were at the top of their glory. They gloried in their immoral life. They gloried in their uh, tempestuous life, un uh, unrestricted life. So they inculcated the same in the young people. Young people reveled in drinking and dancing. So he wanted to introduce moral life among the young people. Therefore they started one, two, three, several, several institutions. He called them as Brahmachari Ashramas. There he used to take the young people and train them in good physical exercises and moral lessons. So, a lot of young people came to him for training. Later on, they became great patriots and struggled for the country's freedom. In the meanwhile, he had a serious problem of fistula. Then fistula had to be operated. So, six inches deep operation was to be done. He said, no, I don't want any chloroform, no, no anesthesia. You can operate, I'll keep quiet. He kept quiet and then they had a six-inch deep fistula operation. So he bore 
for full half an hour and afterwards he recovered so the doctors were amazed at his power of uh, forbearance so in 1897 swami vivekananda returned and he wanted to start a fortnightly in bengali so this swami took, took charge and then he started the fortnightly called the the bengali magazine now and he he brought out the first issue in 1899 january and the first issue came out swami vivekananda himself was amazed how he could take so much of trouble there was no nothing to no no, no basic facility available for starting a printing press so he started from the scrap then he started this magazine udbodhan which is now it has celebrated its centenary so 1899 first issue he brought out and he had only 2000 rupees in his hand with 2000 rupees he had to establish a printing press also and then an office for uh, the udbodhan he had to hunt for the uh, articles he had to write articles he had to print proof correct and then send monthly fortnightly magazine to the subscribers such inhuman struggle he did and brought out swami vivekananda praised him so much this is how a child of sri ram krishna is he can do inhuman things superhuman things because he is the only person who has that faith and who has that superhuman power inside him swami ji praised him very much swami ranganathananda has quoted the praise of swami vivekananda to swami trigunathitananda trigunathitananda was one of our tremendous great karma yogis and afterwards when swami vivekananda heard that turiyananda is coming away to india in 1902 then he wanted somebody else to go and take charge of san francisco center it had been started earlier by swami ji himself and the shanti ashram had been started by swami turiyanand ji somebody has to take charge of that one then swami vivekananda wanted shard sharda prasanna to take charge trigunathi tananda so he was getting ready in the meanwhile swami ji passed away in 1902 swami turiyanand who wanted to meet swami vivekananda he could not meet he arrived in india on in, Ju- in july july 1902 and july 1902 itself swami ji passed away so turiyanand ji could not see swami vivekananda but he said i will not go back to america then he went by the end of uh, 1902 after swami ji is passing away by november 1902 he set sail he came to madras at that time 1902 ramkrishna anji was there in the ice house he must have stayed in the ice house then from here he set sail to colombo and via japan he reached san francisco and then before he started he took two oaths in those times it was strange people used to take oath before they went to west gandhi ji also when he left indian shores to london to study as a student he gave an oath gave a promise to his parents that he would not take meat and he would keep away from women he would be strictly moral so the two oaths he took and then he went to london so that was much later swam trigunathitan swami he took a oath he saying i am going to wear indian dress in america and i am going to be vegetarian there so this is how i am going to preach vedanta there being a vegetarian and wearing indian dress even today it is difficult to wear indian dress there so then at that time people used to think that you are a negro if you go with an indian dress he said i will go with indian dress because swami ji was in indian dress i will also follow him so you can see trigunathitan swami wearing a turban just like swami ji and a big coat and then trouser just like swami ji then so he reached san francisco started training and giving vedanta lessons in san francisco geeta upanishad religious music he called music as a 
very great means for god realization so he used to encourage students to sing western music also and he would also sing very well so he he would take the students to the sea shore and till late in the night they would sing music on the sea shore and then he built the first hindu temple in the western countries first hindu temple in 1906 there was a lot of opposition they all he said the westerners will do not like hindu temple they already they have got hatred for hindus that they are worshippers of images and they are superstitious they are unscientific only they are magicians and uh, um, all sorts of ideas they have so you don't open a hindu temple in the hindu rituals he said no i will construct a hindu temple and open it with all the hindu rituals he did both so and after opening the temple he forced war before everybody he he took an oath as it were and told before a big audience if i have any selfishness in building this temple this temple will fall if i am absolutely unselfish if it is the work of sri ram krishna it will stand and it is standing till today it is there with all its glories that hindu temple we have seen so on all the four sides the four domes are there so on the all the four domes each one is a different uh, architecture the hindu dome is one and muslim dome is there and then christian dome is there and another dome another part another art architecture so all the four domes are there and then this uh, became very small it was it could accommodate about 600 people but his lectures in those times would invite more than 600 people so so popular he was he used to be invited by the universities nearby one university invited him for for a annual function to which the president of india used to president of america used to preside one day at that time the uh, the president could not come so he was invited in his place so he presided over the university function it was a kalidasa drama mrichya katikam the the clay cart mrichya katika mrit shakatika shakatika is small cart mrit is uh, clay clay cart so it is a famous uh, drama of kalidasa it was enacted by the westerners and he was asked to preside over so he was uh, he started the ashram so he had to have monks and nuns there he could not afford to feed them so he told look i cannot feed you but i can give you spiritual life so you go outside and work for 3 4 5 hours or 6 hours so you earn your own food then you come and stay here and then i will give you all other moral support and spiritual support so he used to teach them gita upanishad meditation and he used to put all all over motto on the walls of the ashram live like a hermit but work like a horse he would put these are all mottos on the wall do or die but you will not die because you are the soul you are not going to die watch and pray do it now these were all some of the mottos on the walls of him so he would also go to the shrine before he went to the lecture so when he, before going to the lecture he would look in the shrine there was takur mother swami ji with a kali picture there whenever he would look at kali he would be very much uh, inebriated so his voice would start shaking so the audience told him why do you shake your voice swami ji it looks very unnatural he said i don't shake i am inebriated as soon as i look at the mother's picture so i am inebriated so my voice shakes it is not an unnatural shaking it is a spiritual feeling that i get that is how he brought number of young people both men and women in spiritual life they were all very very devoted to him and the center grew very well and he started work 
at the Shanti Ashram also. And in 1913, the monastery and nunnery that he had started could not get any inmates at all. All that were there, they went away afterwards. Completely it became blank. So then, but he would not stop. Even then he went on publishing a magazine called Voice of Freedom. And in 1914, that was the last year of his life there, so he was lecturing on one Sunday. When he was there delivering the lecture, one of his own students, one Barbara, so this fellow was a little off his head. He was a psychiatric case. Suddenly he brought a bomb, hiding it in his coat. Nobody knew. The lecture was going on. He went straight to the podium where Maharaj was standing and lecturing. He threw the bomb at the Swami. But he was not, he was imbalanced. He did not himself know. The first man to get killed was he himself. He himself died on the spot. And Maharaj was very much seriously affected. His whole lower part of his body was lacerated. His whole body was thrown out beyond some, some several yards out of the main door behind, the hind door behind. Anyway, he was lying there. He was admitted to hospital. He lived there for fifteen days, suffering, suffering. All the while he was telling, Barbara is not at fault. He, is, uh, he was a very good student of mine. So he is not in his uh, control of his uh, mind. What could he do? All the while he was excusing and praying for Barbara. And then he was telling, I can give up my body, but I am waiting for Swami Vivekananda's birthday to come. On that day, I am going to give up my body. So, Swami Vivekananda's birthday came. He said, tomorrow is my last day. Tomorrow is Swamiji's birthday. And he gave up his body. Such was the great person. And Swamiji always used to say, for every great work, there must be great sacrifice. So, the spreading of Vedanta in the West, he was the first martyr for this great work of this Indian nation. So, to carry the Indian message of Vedanta to the West, he was the first martyr. But he has become immortal. Even now when you go, his uh, relics were... Uh, he was cremated there in the Shanti Ashrama. So, there is a big uh, sort of a mound there. On that mound, they have put his relics there. It is called the Siddhagiri now. So, whenever we go there, we are shown that Siddhagiri and once in a year all the monastic members of San Francisco and devotees also, they spend the whole day there, they go and meditate in the Siddhagiri in the nights also. So it has become a great pilgrim, pilgrimage now. So that is how Swami Trigunathitananda lived and died for Sri Ramakrishna's cause. So today we are very lucky, we are very fortunate that we could reminisce some of the great events in his life. May Sri Ram Krishna, Holy Mother, Swamiji and Swami Trigunathitananda bless us all. Niranjanam nityamananta rupam bhaktanukampadhrita vigraham vai ishavataram paramesham idyam tam Ramakrishnam shirasanamamaha